dear friends, I hope this message inspires you to steadfast in the love of the truth from God. Do you remember what I mentioned last year about the return of the Nephilim and the spiritual warfare we are facing? People with eyes to see and ears to hear can recognize and understand the signs of what I had mentioned before, happening with unsurpassed intensity in these present days. People are showing increased signs of being under demonic influence, and narcissists are bluntly showing their true nature. Here are some images of what I am talking about. Sorry, but I don't need your help. Y yes, you do, motherfucker. <laughs> you do! You do need my help, sir! Can't you see that, you son of a bitch? Could you please just let me check out my groceries? Fuck you! I'm trying to help you, motherfucker! <laughs> wow. This is... You gotta ask Jesus Christ. We're I don't all have sinners. to do anything. We're all sinners. Okay. I, he was not, he's not gonna force you, you to do you're it. You're sinning right now. No, I'm not, motherfucker. How? You fucking accuser. Get the fuck out of here, you Excuse fucking me? accuser. <laughs> um, you motherfucking accuser. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Wow. You motherfucking <laughs> accuser. <laughs> accuser of the fucking brethren, you motherfucker. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Friends, I pray, sir. You gotta repent, sir. You gotta repent, sir, for murdering babies. Why? Because it's a sin before God. Why? Wow. Stinky breath. Yeah, Why? that's pretty. That's pretty evil of you, sir. Yeah, I am. And, and I hope and pray that you. Yeah. Ah. Well, that's what you do to babies, huh? Yeah, I love it. You love it, huh? Yeah, I do. Okay, I hope that you come to Christ, sir. Oh, I'd never go to Christ. I hope that you come to Christ. No, sir. I don't go to Christ. Yeah, you. I you, don't listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a heart, darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. You have a darkened heart. I do. I do very, very much. And so. you will stand yeah. before God in judgment. Yes, day, I Monday. will. Every day. You will stand before God in judgment. Yes, day, I Monday. will. Every day. All of the babies that I you have killed. I love it. I love it. Yeah, keep tearing the babies. Yeah, apart. I will. Keep tearing the babies. I apart. will. Keep keep tearing what? the babies yeah, apart. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. The babies, their blood screams from the ground. I was a Christian when I had these demons that were confronted in deliverance several times. Just because I give my life to the Lord, that's the first step. Violence caught on camera aboard a number two train in Midtown. Police say a woman used a stiletto heeled shoe to attack a 79 year old man who was preaching on the southbound train. It the man who is facing charges in connection with the beating death of his mother told police he was possessed by demons and Hitler. Hundreds of people in the valley say they are hearing voices in their heads. And those voices are being transmitted by microwave or... Please, brothers and sisters, steadfast in the love of the truth as we go through the birth pangs of the separation of the narcissists from the children of God, also known as children of the light. God has put in my heart to share this message with you. Please get your house in order with a sincere and close relationship with Jesus Christ. I love you all, and I pray for you and your loved ones to be blessed with the grace of God. God bless you. Please, remember, Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. It's time to get right with God, and I'm telling you now, what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying, Holy Spirit, only you can fill this house with your presence and make Christ real. Only you can speak to the depths of the soul. I'm going to speak to those who know their sinners, to those who have backslidden, to those, O oh Lord, who have been growing cold and indifferent to the call of God and the things of Christ. Oh God, come and speak. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say.
Paul the Apostle said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He said, This is a day of mercy. This is a day of grace. This is the time for you to get right with God and deal with this mercy. Paul said, Don't receive the mercy in vain. Don't turn away from the gentle call of Jesus to come back to his arms. Now, this is a message of grace, but it's also a warning. Now, today, is the day of salvation. Jesus warned that in the last days, many are going to grow cold. The scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. And he said this is going to happen in a time he called the beginning of sorrows. And folks, we're living in the beginning of sorrows. We're living in a time of unprecedented greed, rampant iniquity, sexual perversions beyond description. And Jesus said in those times, in the beginning of sorrows, many hearts are going to grow cold. And he said they're going to turn away. I hear people say, I can get right with God anytime I choose. I'll know the time. I'm not ready yet, and I'll know the time. I, I have some things I want to accomplish in my life, and I have friends, and I want to enjoy myself, and when I'm ready, I'll come to God. Now, there's some problems with that, because coldness leads to hardness. That's what the scripture says. He said, there will come a great falling away. And those who receive not the truth are going to fall under what the scripture calls the deceivableness of sin. It's so deceptive, it can harden a cold heart. I know people that have hardened their hearts because they won't give up friends and they won't listen to me. I know scripture and they seem to be on hearing of the grace and the mercy of God. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you have a hard heart, it's not going to work. You're not going to listen. You're not going to hear. Hardness, a heart that is beyond the influence of the gracious pleading of Christ. They place themselves beyond the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. It's a self-imposed exclusion with no intention of ever obeying the call of the gospel. No intention ever. No matter what preachers preach, no matter how the Lord himself could come down in the flesh, the Bible said, and they, many would not believe. A refusal to accept the mercy of Christ. A person who keeps putting distance between himself and God. Now is the time to get right with God because this generation has lost, secondly, has lost the fear of God. There's no fear of God left in the land. This is what the Bible says. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from their evil. From the fear of the Lord. Years ago, I was invited to speak at a gathering at Yale University. And I was informed before the meeting that a group of demonstrators had come and with signs they had read something I preached from Romans about homosexuality I suppose and they said they're going to demonstrate it at a certain time and I, I said Lord what do I preach and the Lord said preach your message on hell hell what's it like and who's going there and friends oh, I wasn't halfway through when a holy hush when a presence of the Holy Ghost came, I'll never forget it. There was a well-known writer who was writing uh, there to write a report at the meeting, and he said, my pen sounded loud. There was no demonstration. The fear of God came on that campus. You, you see, man can't get away from that nagging sense, and that's the Holy Spirit who says there's death and then there's judgment.
There's a day of standing before God to give an account. And the, and the Bible makes it very, very clear. There's a heaven and there is a hell. And there is a day we're going to have to give an account. And there is a hell. And, and Jesus said there's, there's a hell of, of fire and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, a darkness that can be felt. And there is a hell. But, but you see, man has to invent a gospel where there's no God. And that's where we are in the United States and around the world right now. No hell, no heaven. This is it. So just live it up and have your fun. You see, the devil brings in a Jesus that is tolerant. That's the key word right now, tolerance. Tolerant toward same-sex marriage. Tolerant toward everything. There's no such thing as sin. There's no such thing as a sinner. There's no such thing as judgment. And so they buy into that. Young people are buying into that. Many Christian young people are saying we need to be more tolerant. And so they too believe that same-sex marriage is, is okay with me. But now the spirits speak in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's time to get right with God because Jesus is coming very soon. He's at the door. No one knows the time or the hour, but Jesus told what's going to happen prior to his coming. He gives very clear evidence. Jesus said there'll be wars, there will come false Christ, but don't be terrified because the end is not yet. Then, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs in the heaven. And then shall they see the Son of Man come in a cloud with power and great glory. Listen to what he said. When men's hearts fail them for fear and for looking upon those things that are coming on the earth, it's one of the surest signs when everywhere there's fear and men's hearts are failing them, just watching those things that are coming on the earth. We don't hear much about the coming of Christ in modern Christianity. We don't hear it anymore. I grew up where every Sunday in church this was preached. I grew up believing Jesus could come at any moment. When I first came to New York, that's what I preached on the streets. Jesus is coming, get ready. Beware of those who say in their heart, my Lord delays his coming. Scripture said we are all going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Therefore, beloved brethren, be you steadfast, be unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. He said, no, you don't stop working. You don't stop praying. You don't stop doing anything. You keep moving on. But with this always in mind, looking to and hasting toward the coming of Christ. Blessed are those servants who are on alert when he comes. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord will find watching when he comes. And if he comes in the second watch, be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour when you don't think when you don't expect him. There comes a time God in his mercy says, get up out of the dirt. Make a move. Make a move. I'm pleading with you. Please hear what the Spirit is saying. Turn back, go back today now is the time to make it right I'm asking the Holy Spirit to come right now speak directly into your heart it's time to come humbly to God and say Jesus I hear you and here's the call Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and I'm lowly in heart, and you shall find rest 
for your souls. Take on my yoke, it's easy, my burden is light. And you'll find it's not difficult when you come to him and say, Lord, come, I repent, I give you my heart, I give you my sins. Make me new. Don't harden 